Keep your mind focused, no side distractions with my conscious mention. But my subconscious ain't comprehending. It's like a slave with the willpower of Kunta. But if I don't behave, they come up gon' fuck me. That's real karma sutra. Can you win niggas? It's hard to move us. Stupid niggas trying to move us, cube us. But y'all all going down. Check it like losers, viewers. KU wins where the winners at. I keep my peace sign up to these haters. I'm bringing John Lennon back. And y'all niggas is liars like Thanksgiving Jack. I need it. Well, welcome to the Gene Dexter Show. I am Gene Dexter. Having the most amazing summer. I know you haven't seen me in a minute because it's been very, very, very busy. But today, I had to do this. I've got a really special uh, guest. And uh, oh, before we get into that, I'm at the uh, Carolyn Point Marina behind us. Beautiful downtown uh, yeah. Kirk Kirkland, uh, just outside Le Grand Bistro. And uh, I thought, you know what, special interview, let's do a special location. Sitting next to me is a uh, member of the New School uh, in, in the uh, Seattle urban music scene. And uh, he's done a series called uh, Free Verse. You see it all over YouTube. He just completed verse five, and I love it. And I'm here to talk to him and Thank learn you. so much more about him. Please meet Mr. Juga Hill. What's going on, y'all? Juga <laughs> A. Chili. I appreciate you having me. Oh, anytime, anytime. So I'm just going to come uh, out of the uh, out of the uh, uh, square swinging here. I just want to find out first of all your name, Juga Hill. What is the history behind it, and what does it mean? What uh, you know? Tell me, because I really I don't know. All right. Uh, see. Most people know me as Game Boy. That's how I started off. You know, okay. I started off Game Boy, um, the 80s, baby. I was like 17 when we first started in the business. I'm 25 now, by the way. But um, pretty much, I was getting to a state of consciousness that you know I wanted to grow up. I wanted my image to grow up, and I couldn't grow up being Game Boy, called Game Boy at 25 or even 30. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I decided to switch it. But I wanted something that was more personal, not something that's more gimmicky. So I tried to. So I thought around, you know, my last name is really Hill, mm. by the way. Mm. And um, I thrive in music to change change the culture, but also change the youth, you know, the people that's watching the TV. Because I feel like a lot of artists these days, they're just rapping to make money. And me, I feel like I'm rapping to change minds. Mm. I'm rapping to change the way people are thinking. So pretty much it all started back in the 80s, they had a group named uh, Sugar Hill Gang. That was the first rap group. Okay. And pretty much, they were speaking about things that people, things that people went through on a day-to-day -day basis. Mm -hmm. So I kind of, you know, it kind of, I kind of was inspired by that. But also, people know me as um, selling CDs. Like we've sold 100,000 records independently. Mm -hmm. And there's a, a slang word out here that is, is called jugger. Okay. You know, when, they, when, when, when a person is jugging, you know what that means? Like they're, they're, they're making money. They got an entrepreneurial spirit. Oh. And that's what we're known as. Okay. So, you know, I kind of put the two and two together. You know, took the S out and put the J in, Jugger Hill, okay. you know, instead of Sugar Hill. So it's kind of, it's a, it's a double edged sword. It has two definitions. You know okay. what I mean? Okay. But, um, I feel like at this point in my career, you know, I want to represent something a lot more, um, what's the word? a lot more mature, something mm. that represents me. I'm also a father, you mm. know, and I don't want my son, my, my son or my, my two little daughters calling me game boy. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. just, <laughs> I don't want that. Okay. So, you know, just growing up on the mic. I see. And if you listen to my older music, you hear, uh, you hear a lot of childish things that I'm talking about. You hear a lot of childish sounding music, and now I'm trying to grow up on the mic as well. You know, just talk, choosing to be a lot more tricky with my words, choosing to talk about a lot more important subjects, you know, mm -hmm. choosing to reach a different crowd. Like, I feel like my my, 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 crap, my demographic is a lot older now mm. versus where it was when I was younger. Mm -hmm. Of course. You, well, they, they, well, they stayed with you. They're, follow, they're following you, and they're growing up with you. Some of them, mm -hmm. but, you know, I... I kind of switched it up too much, so I mean, they oh. made it. They may be like, I don't even like this dude like that no more, and I'm gaining a new fan base. I see. Yeah. I see. Okay. So, how did you start out with all of this? I mean, where where where, 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 where were your beginnings uh, with this music journey? Uh, shoot, I started off when I was like six, seven years old. Me and my cousins, we used to perform at the uh, Black Festival, which is now known as the Emoji Fest. We used to perform. Um, I we used to perform at talent shows at school. Mm. I started off in a group, though. Um, just I was one of the only ones that really took it very, very seriously. So 
I moved to Atlanta with my mom and we was doing it out there independently. Um, we shot demos to, um, to uh, uh, So So Death, mm -hmm. to Slip and Slide Records when they was popping. And you know, I just, out there, a lot of artists had the mentality they were waiting for people to give them a deal. You know, mm -hmm. they, they wanted to knock on somebody's door or wait for a deal to hop on their lap. And I was one of those. I was like 14, 13 years old. I used to be at home wishing and hoping that I'll become famous. You know, I used to write all the time, every day, and I used to even pray. I'd be like, man, I hope I, let's, let's get it popping. Mm -hmm. And then reality came in when I went to this big old convention and we pretty much, there was a bunch of radio stations, there was a bunch of record labels, it was a big old convention, man. Slip Aside was one of them, So So Death was one of them, and I forgot the others. Mm -hmm. But I gave them all my demo. And you know, I was, swear to God, man, for like a month straight, I was sitting there hoping that every 1-800 number mm -hmm. was one of them guys, mm -hmm. you know, and I was, I really put my mind to it. And it hurt my feelings, because nobody called, you know, and at the end of the day, um, I ended up moving back to Seattle when I turned 17, mm -hmm. and reuniting with uh, Eustace Callion, which is the dude mm -hmm. with the dreads, Eustace, the dude that be with me, everybody know. But uh, <laughs> yeah, um, pretty much, we used to sell candy in middle school. Mm -hmm. So we used to compete, and I knew he had an entrepreneur spirit like me. So mm -hmm. from Atlanta, I took this anger, hunger, and I formed it into my own drive to turn to to, to make a business. And, you know, I partnered up with Eustace Callion, and shoot, we've been going ever since, man. And Are you sure have? I mean, I've, been, I've, I've certainly been following it. Uh, this thing that you're doing right now with the uh, the Fevers, uh, you know, vo volumes one through five, uh, I think it's been very effective uh, in terms of your strategy. Um, tell, tell me more about that, you know, as far as how you came up with that. Uh, <laughs> uh -oh. hey, we, we, uh -oh. was play, we was playing dominoes one day. Mm -hmm. um, we was playing dominoes, you know, smoking a little tree, medical, and uh, just chilling, you know, having yeah. a good time. And it came up with a good idea called Lyrics of Die Movement. Okay. And we decided, we just sat down and figured, like, at first it was just an idea, it was a campaign. We didn't know what the campaign was about. Yeah. We just tried to, we just knew it was a great idea. So we sat down and tried to figure out different ways where we could take advantage of the online scene. Okay. And right now, online is booming as far as giving out free music, um, giving out free music, doing free video, just visual that people mm -hmm. can see. Mm -hmm. But we wasn't financially at the point where we could just afford to do what Wiz Khalifa did or right. what these artists are doing and give away a whole mixtape. Right. Know? So what we decided to do was, was like, hey man, let's just give them a verse, man. But just let's just make sure this is the, one of the hottest verses that you can give at the moment. So uh, that's what we did. We pretty much. That's brilliant. Thank you, man. I, no, you. congratulations. I, I, I think it's brilliant. Thank you. I really, really do. But. So what? So what's next? I mean, uh, in your uh, in your bag of tricks, what, what, what can we expect now? To be honest, um, an album, an album. We're working the full on an album. album. Full okay. album. First album, debut. We did pre-album series uh, with Game Boy, and the last one there was three. Uh, 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 a value, it was three volumes of a pre-album series, and pretty much what the pre-album was for was to build identity as an artist, because I was young, I didn't know who I, what I wanted to be, I just knew I wanted to rap. Right. And also, I didn't have a big fan base, so I kind of wanted to get a big fan base. Mm -hmm. Also, I wasn't known in the industry, so I kind of wanted to build my business connects. Okay. So that's what that helped, I mean, that's what the purpose of, of the pre-albums was for. Okay. And it was, we were slated to come out with an album right after uh, pre-album chapter three. Okay. Uh, and right now we're working on the album. Okay. We don't have no dates yet, but we're gonna continue to stay consistent with the free verses every single month okay. until we get some dates. Okay. And then once we get the date, we'll be promoting it through the free verses. Right. And you know, pretty much go from there. And we have a show September first if you guys want to come through. Where's it at? It's at the Nectar Lounge. Right? Nectar Lounge, Seattle. Yeah, we're performing with great artists, Dime Def, okay. um, Peter Taj, and uh, uh, Larue. Wow. By E Casual and um, DJ Debris is going to be the DJ, you know. Mm hmm. So, mm hmm. Uh, sounds like a big show. And shout so, out to Gator, too, because he's the one behind the videos. Yeah. Yeah. He, well, he's my producer, too. Big shout yeah, out. He's that guy. Gator, Gator Vision. Or, uh, shout out to you, man, for, you know, giving me the oh, opportunity wow. to talk Thank to you. the people, man, through, yeah. through your uh, avenue of, um, uh, what's the word? Uh, channel or whatever. Yeah, the channel. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Little network. Yeah, shout out to <laughs> shout out to my guy Gene, man. He's I a real respectable that. guy, man. Also, shout out to Dave Beaver, man, because he's the one that really put me in the game as far as um, locally. You know, um, 
Queenside Records. You know, they put me Queen in. Queenside. Yeah. yeah, they've been around quite a, quite, quite a long time. Yeah, I, actually, I was signed to them first. Really? When I was 17 oh, years old. Oh, okay. So okay. I forgot to tell you about that. They're, yeah. the ones that. they're the ones that put me on the game as far as getting out here and selling CDs. Oh. Yeah, we used to go all around selling CDs. So wow. shout out to Dave, man. Definitely. Well, really, all the best to you, and I'm gonna I'm gonna toast uh, Jigga Hill right now. I also promised him a little lunch, so we're gonna head on upstairs uh, to do that. But uh, man, look out for this guy. Uh, Seattle is in a, this huge renaissance period right now. He's definitely a part of it, and I want you to, to be uh, right right there when, when this all happens. All right, Gene Dexter with the Gene Dexter Show, and I'll see you next time. Thank you very much. And when I find out I'ma put a ruby diamond on a ring finger I need a bad bitch, that's a mean thinker He'll talk, you niggas is brain farts Always talking about the end, that's still talk for you That's real talk for you Forging the right ends on the wall This writing will write my will